Hi guys, welcome back to What's the Matter. Uh, this week I'm happily joined by Robbie from Arsenal Fan TV and obviously the ever-present Chris. Uh, we've got a few things to talk about. Obviously with Robbie being here we're going to preview the game. But there's one thing that's been kind of on my mind for the past few weeks now. And over the international break I have kind of want to talk about it a little bit more. So I'm keen to get both of your opinions on this. And it's given Mourinho's track record with his previous clubs in terms of what it's been considered to have a shelf life. Due to him losing the dressing room at Chelsea twice and the burnout by crowd getting on his back. So there's a three-part question, number one. Do we feel that his latest spat with the players, including Smallin with his broken toe, and uh, Luke Shaw, is an even earlier indication of what his shelf life is with Man United? I don't think Come it's an guess. indication of his shelf life. I think he's trying to create a squad and a team revolving around what he believes should be the core of Manchester United or the core of his teams. He's trying to create a team that are willing to go out and go to battle for him. And he's willing to say these things about players because he thinks that he's either going to get a reaction and they're going to come back and play out of their skin and commit or they're going to go, sort of this, not for me, I'm off. And yeah. either way, he wins there because he either gets rid of this shite that he doesn't want and keeps what he wants or he gets players that will come in and, and really commit and put their bodies on the line, which is which is what he wants and what he's always had at, at Chelsea, at, yeah. at, what he had in players like Pepe, at, like Ramos at Madrid. That's the type of player that he wants. He wants someone that will go for go to war, yeah, to win the but football match. Robbie, I mean, I suppose if you had if you had Wenger in the same kind of circumstances, Chris does make a valid point. But if you had Wenger in the same kind of circumstances, do you think that coming out publicly and p putting players almost in the spotlight for being negative and not wanting to play, when in actual fact it turns out that Smalling has a broken foot, <laughs> do you know, surely that, that 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 to me is screaming like. You know, him spitting the stone out of the pram already. He was only five, six months mm. in this, in this tenure. Well, uh, Arsene Wenger is completely the opposite. He yeah. never, no, ever <laughs> talks about. <laughs> is he really? <laughs> <laughs> never ever talks about players in public. Never, even if he's angry with them. Um, and there's been some obvious. I mean, he's obviously at the moment got a beef with uh, Debutri. Yeah. But he's not said a word about it. So he, his style is completely different. Um, Mourinho, he's done it before. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. It didn't work last season with Chelsea. You know, they all rebelled against him. You see the way yeah. Chelsea are playing at the moment. They all seem to be playing with a freedom. Is well, it going to work with these United players? I think the, I think the fact that Smalling's toes, he's got a broken toe, is a bit embarrassing for Mourinho. Yeah. You, you had a go at him. Turns out that, you know, the guy was right to be... I don't think he did. Have know? a go at him, though. At no stage that he mentioned specific players. He had a go about the idea of players... No, out the last minute. And, and don't get me wrong he, he, I think indirectly he was having a go about Smalling about Shaw pulling out last minute turns out Smalling more in injured than perhaps Mourinho thought that he was but it's not like he came out and said Chris Smalling did this isn't playing because of this that and the other Luke Shaw isn't playing because yeah, of but we knew he was talking about but you know who he's talking about yeah. but he's coming out and having a pop in general to kind of get the word out there into the squad maybe it's something that needs to be said we don't know what's going on we've been doing a lot of that exactly it kind of makes you think that there's not a lot of harmony yeah. within the squad when that keeps coming out all the time. I don't know, that's just me. Weirdly, yeah, me weirdly it, from the outside. Weirdly, it seems to be his style. Personally, I've always respected Wenger's approach to not earn his dirty laundry in public. He keeps it behind closed doors. If it's something that he doesn't want to talk about or that he doesn't like, he doesn't speak about it. Mm. But Mourinho seems to be a bit more, these players are getting paid, however many hundreds of thousands that can be criticised and if I've got an issue with it they can knock my door. I read Ander Herrera saying in uh, The Independent or The Guardian he was saying how Mourinho is very open and honest with the players and if they ask him something he tells them honestly so they respect the fact that he'll tell them to their face what's going on. So if he's calling them out publicly uh, and also saying it to their face in training every day when they knock his door and when they're sitting they're talking about squads, contracts, all those things, if he's saying it to them and he's mentioning it in the press, I think they're getting paid enough money to be able to take a bit of criticism and not throw their toys out of the pram. If, well, I don't know about that. Ultimately, you, like, you, you mentioned Wenger doesn't air his dirty laundry in public. Why can, why can we not do that ourselves? This is back, back to my original point of, it's, he's done it before. It, you can see the telltale signs of Mourinho getting to the point where he starts to lose the dressing room. And this is one of the telltale signs of it, of him, or, of him publicly coming out and shaming players for something that they really shouldn't be shamed for. I mean, if the guy's injured, he's injured. 
and that would all take a back seat if we were playing good football and if Mourinho had something to back it up with. Mm. But at the minute, with the exception of the Swansea game, I know we, won't, I know we beat Swansea, but with the exception of that, the previous four or five games, we haven't been playing good football. Mm. So that the this o- is the, the next o- question. The only, one, the only thing I'd say, right, it's that I can't believe I'm supporting Mourinho. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, God. But in support of Mourinho on the Luke Shaw one, I mean... The manager, the, the previous manager, called him out as well, didn't he? Yeah. For you know for being, being overweight and yeah. stuff like that. What's happening with Luke Shaw? I mean, he, he came in there as, I mean, I know he had the injury and he came in as such a massive prospect. There really seems to be a problem with discipline hmm. with Luke Shaw. I don't know, his second manager has kind of called him out. But, but Mourinho called him out at, before, but even before that last game against Swansea. It was, the, mm. it was the previous couple so of weeks as well, wasn't it? Is there a problem? I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think Mourinho just wanted a scapegoat. That's my, that's my opinion. Mm. I mean, let us know what you think at home. Uh, do you think that Mourinho's now got to the point where, where, where it's the telltale signs of him spitting his dummy out? I, think, he, I, I think he's trying to provoke a reaction. And I think at Chelsea, it went heads up for him. And because it didn't work at Chelsea, it's put a bit of emphasis on the fact that is he losing the dressing room here? Yeah. But actually, I think it's his style to try and call people out to get a reaction. And... To be honest, after watching some of those games that you've referred to, he needs a reaction. It's the right way to go about that by publicly shaming your players well, when you should be getting that's, behind that's, them. That's, that's the question, really. But I think it depends on what he's saying to the players. And I think, put yourself in his shoes, maybe he shouldn't have said it out as publicly as he did, but Luke Shaw to come out of his hotel room on the day of the match and say, can't play the day, and his game plan defensively goes out the window I mean it's, it's hard to take so he probably had a better pill to swallow Smalling probably got tarred with the same brush indirectly but I think he had a, a, a legitimate point to make maybe he shouldn't have made it publicly ok fair enough I personally I think that if, no, no matter what happens as a manager of Man United Football Club you have to do things a certain way if, if, if you are, he's going to lose the dressing room if he keeps going the way he's going you know making mm. things public if, come on out and shame the players after the game do you know? I, it's I like know. he keeps doing it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if, I mean, if it was against Arsenal, you know, if against, if, let's put it this way, against Arsenal on Saturday, Shaw comes in before the game and says, "Listen, boss, I'm not. I don't think I'm fit enough to play." Surely that's commendable. That has to, that has to be commendable to say, "Listen, you know, for any footballer of, at any level, you want to be playing big games, don't you? You've got the mentality of, I want to play against these boys. I want to show them what I'm made of. We want to go out. We want to win. Whatever the case may be." And for him to, to pull out last minute, there must have been something seriously wrong to do that. You know, yeah, that has to be commendable to say, listen, I'd love to play, but I think there has to be someone in my position who's more fit and able-bodied to play than I am. It depends on but your but mentality. It, it, I think, it, look at Roy Keane with the Ireland squad um, in the, in the build-up to the international match. He, he, he did the same thing. He, he was, wasn't necessarily calling out the players, but he was calling out Everton and having a go about the fact that there are players who are pulling out of Ireland squads because they've got knocks. But then the likes of Keane, obviously Mourinho's of the same opinion, is that you're never going to be fit if you're a professional football player. You never should be 100% fit during the season if you're given every single ounce of your effort, every single game and every single day in training. But it's not about carrying knocks. It's not about carrying knocks. It's about your passion and drive to play and your passion and drive to play. I'm sure you agree with me here, Robbie. I'm sure you've got Arsenal players like that as well who will play with knocks and whatever. But if you get to the point where you feel like you're unable to to perform and do your duty, you should have a responsibility to tell the manager, Mm. I I, I can't play to my full potential here today. I think at United though, at the minute, we have a case where players are playing well at, at clubs and we are bringing them in and then they're not performing for us. And it's happened over the last three seasons, nine to the fourth season. Do so you think the, the best way to do that is develop? No, no, not necessarily. Publicly? I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, there's a prima donna situation where the likes of the pie are coming in, the likes of Shaw, the likes of other players are coming in, and they think I'm at Man United now. I'm getting paid the big money. I can do what I want, and they're not performing under the pressure and to the standard that Manchester United would demand. And what Mourinho's doing is calling them out on it. And if they're not going to react to that and come out and, and give everything for the, the, the badge and for the shirt, then cheerio. What do you think? Yes, no? I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> 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 I'm enjoying it. Um, as I said, it's, it's foreign to, to me because that's not Arsene Wenger's style. Yeah. He would never call a player out in public. It's Mourinho's style. And as I said, sometimes it works. You know, It's worked for him before in the past. Siege mentality, calling out players in public. It's worked for him in the past. But he has to be very careful here. This is a different club. Man United is a different club, I think. And one of the players he's named actually was properly injured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I just feel that he has to, you know, if, if it doesn't work 
and players start turning against him, you know, it, it could be a very long season for him. So, mm. you know, it's, it's, it's all, you know what football's like, it's all on results. If, yeah. if you go out and you get a result yeah. against us and in the next game after that, everybody would just say it's genius by Mourinho. But if it doesn't work out, then people are going to start saying, well, hold on, we've got another Chelsea situation mm. here. It's what he did last year at Chelsea. And, you know, it, it fell worked. apart for him. Yeah. But then he's done it previously before with Matter and people like that at Chelsea and it worked out for him. So, who knows? I think you're right, Robbie. I think results are going with you and most of the players are playing well and you're calling out one or two here and there. They want to get back into the phone mm. so that they react well. Yeah. But like last year at Chelsea, they were losing games. He was calling them out. They were losing more games. He was calling them out. The dressing room got fed up with it. He lost it. So, I think the next five or six games for us leading up into the Christmas period are definitely very very important games mm. I think if he doesn't put a positive spin on what's going on then it could be a, a difficult time for him but I I don't agree necessarily with the method but I agree with what he's trying to do is to, to get rid of those players that aren't 100% committed to, yeah. the, to the success of Manchester United I think both these hold valid points I think ultimately it's down to that, like you mentioned the next 5-6 games if you can call out who you want but if, if like you say if the results aren't aren't showing then mm. then you start asking real mm. big questions I mean let us know at home what you think I don't think he'll come under any pressure for his job I think he's, he's, he's got time he, and he needs it he deserves it because his, his record his record who he is his personality the what he's trying to do I think he deserves time to do what his well, objectives are but Oh, but I on the flip side the of that, we're Man United. We're Man United, and it doesn't matter who you are or who, what your name is. Like you're talking about players coming in thinking they're this and they're that because they're playing for Man United. You're 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 the manager of Man United, and you should behave appropriately. Well, what I would say is the results are important, yes. But I think even more than that is the philosophy behind what's going on. We need to see a clear idea of how we're going to play football over the next couple of seasons, the next three seasons. The likes of Liverpool, Arsenal for a long time, even City. Players in those types of teams have an, an understanding of the message that the coach or the manager is asking of them, the yeah. way they want them to play. And if you're losing or drawing games, if you're thinking of a long-term idea of how the, the club is going to develop, then you can understand that so, to some degree. Mm. But if you're losing because of like Van Hal and Moyes, where there's headless chickens running around and there's no clear idea of how the club's trying to play, then that's whenever you start to get angry. But if Mourinho can show a clear idea of, of what he wants to achieve in the long term, in the short term, you can accept a little bit of dragging his feet. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I can accept that. I can accept that and move on. Uh, so moving on then to the Arsenal game. Hmm. Saturday, half 12 kickoff. I know we were talking off camera about uh, what we think the lineups are going to be. But uh, you think you think Mourinho is going to line up to, to come out and attack, Robbie? Yeah, I think, I think no. No, I don't think he'll line up <laughs> to attack because he never does against us. He never, ever comes out and attacks Arsenal. He always goes defence first. And I think um, he'll do a similar thing to like what he did against Liverpool, where he'll be very defensive, very cagey. We'll try and draw Arsenal onto onto um, United, and then try and catch us on the counter. Um, it'll be a very tactical game, um, as far as Mourinho's concerned. But I think yeah, it will be defence first. I I can't see him doing it any other way. And to be fair to him. He's had a lot of success with it in the past. Worked, We've yeah. never beaten... Arsene Wenger's never beaten Mourinho. And we've got a terrible record against Manchester United at Old Trafford. So, when I really look on it like that, he'd be stupid, really, to change it. Yeah. You know, and go and try to come all attacking and get done. So, I think he will be... I think he'll be a very cagey... I think it'll be typical Mourinho. I just hope that, you know, Arsenal know that and, you know, we can break you guys down. I hope not. <laughs> um, we've got the quality to do it. I think we've got a better team than we, you know, the, when, when we played you last season, I think that was possibly our worst performance of the season when we played against you. You were there for the taking that day and we were awful in the first half of that game and it was really disappointing performance. Um, you've got a stronger team this season. We've got a stronger team this season and I think, you know, we've got a chance. You talk about the injuries you've got at the moment. You talk about, you know, a bit of disharmony in the camp and stuff like that. It's something that we can exploit. We've been playing well this season. We've only lost one game, which was the opening game. And even in that game, we had a very 
weakened team in that game against Liverpool. I think a lot of people forget about that. That we, we He's making excuses already. <laughs> no, no, no. But in that, in that game against Liverpool where we lost, um, you know, we were missing a lot of um, players. Liverpool deserved to win, but we were missing a lot of key players in that game. But since then, we've been un- unbeaten. Um, we've been unbeaten on the road as well. We've been very impressive on the road. So I think it's going to be a good Arsenal team you're coming up against this weekend. And yeah, I think I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be tough because, you know, I just, we've got such a bad record against you, but that has to change. Yeah. You mentioned injuries there, and especially on the United side of things, Chris. Do you think that that'll play a key part, especially against, like Robbie's talking about, a great Arsenal team and Sanchez and Walcott's playing, having the season of his life? And uh, it's Ozil up top. Bailly's going to be our biggest miss. Like Against Liverpool, we were, we were a, a good defensive unit, and I think that is going to be the, the decisive factor is can we keep them too quiet can we keep Ozil and, and Sanchez if he plays quiet and that will really be the, the what decides the game in, in my opinion I think Mourinho is I think he'll be more attacking than he was against Liverpool simply because we're at home but I do think mm. he'll still be defensive first I think, yeah, I I think it'll be a case of even in that game against Liverpool Ibrahimovic scores the chance that he had we won 1-0 I mm. think he'll, he'll defend and he'll set them up to not concede but he'll be counter-attacking. How do you think he's going to do that with Fellaini? I, I I don't know whether it'll be Fellaini will play. I, I think, personally, it'll be Carrick with either Herrera or Fellaini beside him. I think Pog will push forward in the number 10 with Matt on one side, Rashford on the other, and Rooney up top. And I think you're just you're relying on a, a counter-attack there where we're, we're trying to catch you high mm. up the pitch and bring it up for the likes of Rashford to push in behind the defence and try and get mad at the link up a few things there. Hopefully Pogba's on his game, like he was against Swansea, like he was against Burnley. And if, if we can do that, then there's you never know, we could we could, we could take it 1-2-0. Yeah. But on the flip side of that is, if the makeshift defence of whoever it is, it could be potentially Belind and, and Jones, could be Rojo and, and Jones, if they can't keep Ozil and Sanchez quiet, we could lose it 2 or 3 mm. nil. You just oh, it's, 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 yeah. it's on a knife edge, really. It's, it could go one way or the other. Mm. Key to Arsenal is if, if Sanchez is fit. And that's a big problem for us because, you know, if he's playing, I can see him giving you a back four lots and lots of problems. If he's Giroud, I think he can cope with that a lot better. Mm. Um, Phil Jones, and if, if he's playing, Blind will be able to cope with Giroud yeah. a lot easier. But, if it's Alexis, you don't know where he is. Yeah, you know his work rate he, is second. His on. work rate is unbelievable. He'll close down those um, back four at every opportunity. You know he'll be over all over him like a rash, yeah. and he will be a major threat to um, your team. I'm so happy that Ibrahimovic is out because you know he's he's such a I don't know quality actually player. I don't know that I, I mean don't get me wrong I'm in agreement with both of I think Baye will definitely be our biggest miss in defence yeah, and a I big, think yeah. I think Sanchez if he plays will be our biggest threat uh, but in terms of Ibrahimovic I mean he's had he hasn't been terrible but he hasn't been brilliant the last few games but he scored I twice think, in the last game and he's a quality player I think I think I sometimes I know, players, he, I don't think he played that well yeah, I think sometimes with players like that though is that they're world class players so these are the games that they live for mm. So these are the games where they really step up. So I really like him. To I'm see just play. I'm just glad he's not playing. For me, I'm happy he's out. See, we said this last year though, when you who was who was Marcus Rashford against Arsenal. <laughs> you know, he was no well, one, and he popped true. up and scored too. That's very I, I'd true. I'd like to like to see uh, uh, Mourinho give one of the kids a chance up top, like mm. Rashford or Rashford or even Martial. Player. Even play Martial up I would top. Love to if see it a means game. dropping Mourinho, really so I'd good. love to see a game, not against Arsenal, but I'd love to see a game somewhere in the season. Where we go four four two, yeah, and we put Marshall and Rashford up front, and we just blow teams away because they've got the pace to destroy defenses. We don't have the wingers, though, Chris. I don't think United have the wingers to play four. Well, whenever Valencia comes back, you'll have a, a very good winger there who I think should be pushed further on up the pitch if we can get some cover in behind him. Mm. I'd love, to, I'd love us to shine to sign Seamus Coleman or someone of that like that can sit behind someone like Valencia, and we can just pump players up the wing, throw the ball in. Funny you mention like that. Next, actually, next week I want to talk about the players that we need. To, I mean, coming up to a very busy Christmas period. On the fourth of December is our first uh, first game of December, and it's away to Everton, which is I mean the way Everton are playing at the minute with, with Cumin and you know they're flying. So we'll we'll talk about that next week. But I think Coleman's a a great shout for yeah, who we need to bring players. in. 
We need a right back. We need, <laughs> we need a full back, Robbie. We need how many more players are you not going to buy, man? How, many more money, how much more money are you going to spend? We need, we, like, we need a full back and we need a centre half, clearly. And by the way, I'm not happy about that. Throughout the programme, you've got that Okay, so finally, score predictions then? Oh, whew. I don't think we're going to lose the game. I don't think Arsenal are going to lose. I think, you know, as I said, away from home this season, I've been very impressed with the way we've played. And I think we will cause you problems. But then it's Mourinho, it's United. We've got such a bad record. But then we've been getting rid of... We've been dispelling some of those. You see. We beat Chelsea. We hadn't beaten for ages. Swansea had the number of over us for a few seasons. We beat them. So... That's not, you still have score prediction, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> a draw. I'm going for a draw. I think it will be a draw. Um, both teams have got players who are just returning back from international duty as well. Yeah, I'm going for a draw. And going yes. op- optimistic, I have to. 1-0 United. 1-0. Mm. I think it's going to be 1-0. It's going to be 0-0, nil, 1-0. Nil, nil. There's going to be something that will just nick it. Watch me get this one completely wrong. Because it's predicted against Liverpool to be 4-3 or 3-2 or something <laughs> like that. And it couldn't have been more of a boring game. So, I really, obviously, I'd like to think we'd win at home. We'd like, I'd like to think we'd win, but I think it'll be tight. I, I kind of find it, right, like, bad that, you know, we're talking about, this is the game that, in the past, Man United versus yeah. Arsenal... Everybody's like, this is going to be the game of the week yeah. easily. There's going to be goals. There's going to be, but because of Mourinho, I he, agree. He's like you. I mean, that's the only thing I'd say with Man United bringing in Mourinho, right? Is that it, his style of football? Is this what you guys want? No, I mean, no, it's not. He's not an exciting. You know, he, he does. He's got a great record of bringing trophies to the table, but his style of football is dire. This is what I've been saying. I wouldn't for the last personally want Arsenal. I've always said that. I've been I've been abused non-stop on this channel for the last three <laughs> or four weeks because of what happened after the Liverpool game, and to a certain extent after what happened against Chelsea as well. And in that, in saying that, while I'm not calling from Mourinho's head, and far from yeah, it, I mean, but at the same time, it's too early. It's for, not the Man United like way of playing football. The way Mourinho's playing at the minute, Chris, I'm sure you agree with me. It, it's not it, it's not the Manchester United way, but I'm hoping. That once he gets the structure and the core of what he's trying to build, that his, his football goes back to when he outscored Barcelona in, the, in La Liga a few seasons. I'm ago. hoping that too, but I mean, I think it's more Inter Milan at the moment. Yeah, I I, I'm, I'm scared <laughs> to say that I agree with Robin. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't look great at the moment, but I think he's going to get rid of a lot of dead wood. We are going to sell players. We are going to buy players. We are going to throw money at it. It's, it's what's been happening. It's what's going he's, to He is on. a winner, to be fair to him, as I said. He knows who, how to win, doesn't he? He does. In a way, who am I to talk? Because we've never beaten a Mourinho team. So I'm hoping that changes this week. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Mourinho goes out and absolutely destroys you. And I'm sure everyone else does at home. Uh, let us know what you think, obviously, in the comments below. Uh, I want to thank Robbie for coming in with the show this, this week. And Pleasure. obviously, the ever, ever-present Chris. And tune in again next week. Hopefully we can talk a little bit more about us beating Arsenal on Saturday afternoon. And a little bit more about... <laughs> I can see Robbie shaking his head in the corner of my eye. <laughs> a little bit more about the transfers in and out. Who we think we're going to be needing over the Christmas period and for the rest of the season. Uh, hopefully you should have a banner come across the bottom of your screen now. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe already. Also, if you haven't subscribed to Robbie's channel, Arsenal Fan TV, give that a quick look up too. Uh, some decent videos on there. None about Man United, obviously. <laughs> but uh, obviously have a look. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Thanks very much, guys. Bye-bye.